The road to the site was constructed in 1956, allowing public access. Prior to the road, the site remained largely intact. Travel back to the 1860s and imagine not only building such a fort, but attacking it as well. No roads, no easy way up, as the Confederates would soon learn. Fort Dickerson, located in Knoxville, Tennessee, was named after Union Army Captain Jonathan C. Dickerson, who was with the 112th Illinois Volunteer Mounted Infantry. Dickerson was a 30-year-old carpenter by trade and was killed in a battle near Cleveland, Tennessee, some 83 miles southwest of Knoxville. Fort Dickerson, designed by Captain Orlando M. Poe, Chief Engineer of the Army of the Ohio, was completed after the Siege of Knoxville by the 21st Ohio Battery of Artillery and Cameroon's Brigade. The siege began on November 17, ending on December 14, 1863. Fort Dickerson, while a small earthen fort and of little significance in the entirety of the Civil War, it played a major role in protecting Knoxville and disrupting Confederate supply lines. Tennessee, while it formally succeeded from the Union, Knoxville remained largely under federal control. Knoxville was a strategic goal of the Confederates as it was a crossroad of their supply lines leading to Virginia, where their capital in Richmond was located. Perched on a prominent hill just south of downtown Knoxville, with sister forts Stanley and Higley nearby, it is clear why such forts were constructed. Fort Dickerson, Stanley, and Higley were built during the winter of 1863 to 64. Fort Dickerson was one of 16 earthen forts and battery emplacements built to defend Knoxville. The fort has a commanding view of Knoxville and is approximately 200 feet above street level. Most, if not all, the trees surrounding the fort were cut down for better firing opportunities and were used to build the fort. The Federals could see the Smoky Mountains to the south and all the ridges closer to Knoxville, which gave them a distinct advantage. From then to now, many trees have grown, which obstruct the view from what was all those years ago. A dry ditch offered an almost 10-foot, steeply banked obstacle to attackers, should they get that far. The dry ditch encircles the entire fort. With cannon, musket, and rifle fire, it was an almost impossible task to take the fort. The fort had strong entry gates of logs and a covered powdered magazine in the center. The surrounding walls of earth were much higher than today, as nature has worn much away. It contained 25 embrasures, openings through which cannons fired and four to eight cannons were usually in place and could be moved to different embrasures to fire on the enemy. Entering through the gate, it appears that mounds of earth added significant protection. The wooden walls, now long rotted or repurposed, added to the protection. The underground magazine clearly shows the careful planning against Confederate cannon shot. The Confederates sent a force of a thousand men across the river and attacked it on November 15th and 16th, 1863. The Confederates were surprised to find that they were no longer facing only cavalry, but also infantry and artillery dug in on the height of what would become Fort Dickerson. After exchanging rifle and artillery fire and examining the terrain, General Wheeler ordered a withdrawal, pronouncing the terrain too steep and the heights too well defined, rendering the prospect attack too costly in both time and manpower. Wheeler's men withdrew to join Longstreet in the Siege of Knoxville. Seen from a distance and from the fort, one can readily understand why attacks failed. It is unclear how many casualties were sustained on both sides due to the attacks on the fort. Fort Dickerson is said to be one of the best preserved earthworks forts in the United States. While not as impressive as when constructed, as nature has worn down much, it stands as a reminder of many elements concerning the Civil War in Knoxville. The footings of this contested railroad bridge are from the era and were one supply line to the fort. This bridge is still in use today.
the Knoxville Civil War Roundtable has placed three iron replica three-inch ordnance rifles in the fort and has installed several interpretive signs with information on the fort, the actions at Knoxville, and the importance of Knoxville's role in the Civil War. Each November, the Knoxville Civil War Roundtable holds a Civil War weekend for the public. Fort Dickerson is a city park open dawn to dusk. As it was only one of the forts built to protect the town of Knoxville, it is nevertheless a significant part of history, and as such, should be recognized and remembered. For information and additional video footage, please continue watching. These elements were left out of the main production, which was meant as an overview. Read the place cards, see more, learn more.